John Mendez here and we're just going to have a little chat about mooring buoys which are essential for having a short stay, a longer stay or for some boats that's where they live. So to give you an idea of what we're going to do with them we're going to introduce some props. So we've obviously got the mooring buoy itself and then we've got our little boat and just like in real life we've got an arrow to simulate wind and an arrow to simulate the tide or stream. And we can balance the boat on this combination of wind and stream and that allows us to work out what's the best angle to approach the mooring buoy. And then in real life we're going to show you some techniques to pick one up. So in the scenario I've drawn we've got a bit of wind and tide and the angle of approach of our boat will be somewhere here. We practiced that before, holding station and we can use transit if they're available. And then we, once we get the boat stationary all we need to do then is work out what sort of technique we're going to need. If the buoy has a pickup, which is a small little secondary buoy that you can put a boat hook through, it's really simple. We pick that up, bring it on board, there'll be a big loop, and the big loop goes on our cleat on the front. Second would be if we don't have a pickup buoy and we've just got a ring in the top of the buoy. That's really hard on a motorboat because our foredeck is normally really, really high in relation to the buoy. So the technique we can use is we can lasso the buoy. And basically we just take a reasonably long bow line, do some coils, chuck the line so it goes over the buoy itself and sinks, attach it to our second cleat on the other side of the boat, get ourselves organised and now we can lean down and using the rope we've used either lift the buoy or thread a line through to attach ourselves permanently. Stern on our motorboats nice and low and often provides much better access. So one of the techniques we can do for a short stay is just reverse the boat up to the buoy and just using a nice short line thread it through the buoy and just attach and that's fine in light conditions nice cup of tea or either whatever you need and lastly if we want to stay overnight the buoy is quite small big enough for the size of boat but the ring is difficult to reach and lassoing is not really an option we can take a line from the bow of our boat walk it down outside the rails to the stern reverse up thread through and then if we just pull on the line the boat will rotate and then be moored the correct way round for a longer stay without all the hassle of trying to lasso. So we're ready here with our first go at mooring boys. This is the one with the pickup buoy. So I'm about 10 meters away. I've got my crew man on the bow. He's got the boat hook to pick up the pickup and he's going to give me direction by pointing a bit like a harpoonist and if he's feeling clever, he can give me distance as well by just raising fingers. So we have three meters, two meters, and a meter, and that just allows me to see how we're doing. And we've got a little bit of wash coming in here from another craft, which is really quite realistic and gives you an idea of it. Positioning is all just at this point with throttles and a tiny bit of wheel if we need. I can see now it's about three meters off. Tiny twist needed. And we're down to two meters. I lose sight of it at this point, but that's okay. My crewman is ready there. And we're right over it now. Just gonna stop the boat. He's grabbed the line. That's worked remarkably successful. Now we're just gonna do our lasso technique. And for that one, I've positioned myself in my safe position again. The boy is up element of me. Richard has got a line attached to one of our bow cleats. The rest is coiled, ready to drop over the boy, and he'll tie it back on the other side. A little bit more difficult for him to do distance this time, because obviously he's clutching a rope, but uh, I'm sure we can make it. OK, 
Okay, I can see him getting ready. Line has dropped over. Line has gone on. He's just going to make that off now. And there we are, nicely attached. So we're just lining ourselves up this time for a stern approach. And while we've been doing our little film shots, the tide itself has turned, so my safe position has become the other side of the buoy. You can judge that from the fact that the white pickup buoy is now sitting down tide of the buoy in this direction. Earlier, it was the other side. So all those little clues, the boats in the harbour have all turned round. All of those things are just giving us a little clue as to what's going on. So my crewman's ready in the cockpit. We're going to reverse up with the starboard quarter, put it up against the buoy, and we're going to ignore the pickup buoy and just thread through the eye on the centre of the main buoy itself. So you can see what we would do if we didn't have a pickup buoy. So just nice and gently, and I can nicely lean out here and talk to my crew and work my way up there. And it's really quite civilised. If I'm single-handed and I need to pick up a mooring buoy, I nearly always do stern fetch and pick it up on the quarter. I find it much easier. Good. We can see the buoy moving with the tide, that little arc around it. We're going to get a little bit of wash in a minute from all the other craft in the harbour, and that's fine. What I have to be very careful of with this approach is my props on any spare lines that are on the buoy itself. So we're just going to very gently manoeuvre ourselves a little bit closer. And you can see just how much control I've got into this element here. And it's the same with wind, exactly the same process all the way through. Just bringing it nicely in forward. He's going to thread our line through there. We just do one tiny click to make the boat move down tide. He'll make that off. And we're nicely tied on. Couldn't be simpler. Okay, so Richard is now preparing our bow line this time and we're taking it all the way down the side of the boat, outside of everything, and he'll give it a little flick so it doesn't land in the water. And I'm going to do same approach, reverse up to the buoy, he'll thread the line through just as we did and through the eye of the main buoy itself. And Vinny's going to be walking forward with that line which has come off our starboard bow, we'll swivel round on the element, which in this case is the tide, and we'll end up threaded onto the buoy through the eye with no hassle. And this would be quite safe for an overnight. If I was staying overnight and it was going to be windy, I'd have it through twice, so we had a little bit of rub room. Boy's just coming up astern of me now, just gently bringing her up here. Got to be careful of that trailing pickup buoy. We'd normally do this technique when there isn't one, but uh, got to go with what we got. Trying to just use the engine that's furthest away from the buoy, so I don't get tangled. There we are, he's threaded it nicely. That's it. And now he's just going to walk through and pull. That's it, just pull Richard. And then what I can do as a skipper now is if I've got a bow thruster, if I bow thrust towards the buoy, it makes the whole thing that much easier for him as I'm helping him turn the boat. Here it comes. Boy's just down here. Here we go. He's got a little bit of momentum now. Just keeps walking. And the bow thrust is just making that job that weeny bit easier. We are very nearly round and I think this is a really elegant technique relatively simple and if you're not the strongest crew in the world you can always swap places and be the strong person to pull on the line 